Okay, we have here set S. Consists of five objects. So quantity A, quantity B, the number of subsets of S that consist of one object. So this one I think is a fair one in the sense that you could actually just draw this out. You could say, okay, there's five elements, A, B, C, D, and E. So you could say, well, it could be A. Let's go over here, A, B, C, D, or E. That means that's a subset and contains one object. So you basically have the number five here. Now you look at the second one and it says sets of four objects. And so you could technically, you could write this out. I mean, you can, you can find all of them. It's a little bit of a sketchy process. I mean, you can miss one of them. You could also, you're also gonna take a lot of time, but you could get it. So don't despair on a problem like this, but you should, if you know your combinations, permutations, the difference between the two, you should say, aha, combinations problem. I'm selecting a group, the order doesn't matter. I have a, a total of five, and out of that five, I'm choosing four, and left with one. So that's that little formula you can use, and it just, you're able to set that up times one, I'm not gonna put the one, it's redundant, and I have four times three times two. Boom and boom, cancel them all out. And so you can see that's equal to five. And so the answer is C. So yeah, if you miss this problem, know that's a combinations, know that why it's a combinations problem. And if you got it right, but you did this way, know that the GRE could easily have changed this problem and said, okay, set, set S consists of, let's say 15 objects, and how many subsets have five, how many have 10. And then, you know, you would be here literally till the next century trying to write out all the different possibilities. And that's when you have to use that combination formula. But in any case, for this answer, it is C. Or for this question, the answer is C.